שלום to everybody, and we are studying today uh, פרשת ויחי, the last פרשה of the book of Genesis, בראשית. You can find it in the book of Genesis, chapter 47, verse 28. ויחי יעקב בארץ מצרים שבע עשרה שנה. And Jacob lived in the land of Egypt 17 years. 17 years. And 17, the number 17, symbolize good, because the numerical value of the Hebrew word tov, good, is 17. Tov is made of tet, 9, vav, which is 6, and bet is 2. Together, 17. So, finally, Jacob had a long journey of so much, so much work, hard work, of any kind, he finally reaches 17 good years with his son, his sons and daughters and everybody, the whole family, he watches the family grow and becoming a tribe. Okay? So he lived 147 years. So the name of the parasha, Vayechi, and he lived. And like with Sarah, it speaks about his death and the, the name of the parasha, his life. Okay, which means he really figured out the secret of really true life. Not like many people, that they basically die a little bit every day till finally you have the final death. And so, after this opening verse, uh, ver uh, verse 29, chapter 48, 47, And the days of Israel, Israel came for him to die. Why is that? We, sp we spoke about it many, many times, but the Zohar speaks about it so many, in so many places that every day is another opportunity for each one of us to fill it up with our own creativity and spiritual growth. When we overcome negativity, when we overcome despair and all kinds of uh, challenges and we create light of dark out of darkness and sweet out of bitterness, that day becomes an angel of positivity that walks with us wherever we go till the afterlife. And even in the afterlife, it stays with us because whatever you generated and created is yours forever. So when a person leaves this world, and there are many, many, many articles in this parasha about leaving the world, about what happens to the soul when before leaving the world, before death, during death, and after death. Uh, so when it says the days of Israel, Jacob, now his name is Israel. His days came to his death. What does he mean? When a person leaves this world, all those great positive angels that he created or she along he or her or his life, these angels come with us. And that's why it says all of them came close. They gather all of those positive days because when a person goes to sleep, it's like there is, a, there is a summary of what kind of a day was it. Was it a great positive day? It becomes a great guardian angel that walks with us forever. Or if it was a terrible day in which we didn't basically follow the light and we uh, became servants of the dark side, then it becomes a dark angel that sooner or later will have to deal with it with that dark angel and to transform him. So uh, when, Isa, when Israel, Jacob, realizes that his days are coming, he calls his son Joseph. And then <clears throat> he asks him not to bury him in Egypt, but here comes the whole, and that's what most of the parasha is about. It's a legacy Jacob is giving to his son. Joseph and his grandsons and the rest of the family. And 
chapter 48, verse 1, ויחר דברים אלה ויאמר, ויאמר ליוסף, הנה אביך חולה. After those words, uh, later on, Joseph gets a message that his father now is sick. ויקח את שני בניו, so Joseph takes his two sons. Okay, he takes his two sons with him. And he goes to visit Jacob. And Jacob is giving, this is one of the most famous parts in the whole, in the whole Bible, it's, it's Joseph, it's Jacob's blessings to, uh, to the sons of, uh, to the son, uh, is Israel's a blessing to the sons of Joseph. And amazing blessings. First of all, he's giving blessing to Joseph. Boimer Yaakov el Yosef, uh, verse 3, chapter 48, verse 3. Yaakov el Yosef, God is being revealed to me in the land of Canaan, and he blessed me. And he told me, I'm going to multiply you, and I'm going to make you a host of nations, and I'm going to give this land to you and your offsprings uh, forever. And then he says to Joseph, and he gives this blessing to Joseph. And verse 5, And the two sons that are born to you in Egypt, before I came to Egypt, that are mine, Ephraim and Menashe, your two sons are going to be for me like my Shimon, Ruven and Shimon. Which means he blesses them that they are going to become two tribes. What does it mean? That Joseph is getting the rights of the birthright of the firstborn. The firstborn gets double the, uh, than the others. And therefore here Joseph is getting two tribes. Menash and Ephraim are going to become two tribes. Uh, he gives him this blessing and then, and then he's uh, blessing the, the sons. And we have here a few blessings that became kind of a... This, when you want to bless somebody, that you're using, the, you're using these blessings till today, the same words that, Joseph, that uh, Jacob is blessing his grandsons. And we'll start with uh, verse 15. ויברך את יוסף, and he blesses Joseph, ויאמר, and he says, האלוהים אשר יתהלכו אבותיי לפניו, the God that my, my fathers walked in front of him and served him, אברהם, יצחק, האלוהים הרואה אותי מאודי, the God is, the Lord that is my shepherd, all my life, till today, עד היום הזה, verse 16, המלאך הגואל אותי מכל רע, יברך את הנערים. And the angel, that redeems me from all evil will bless the boys. And, then, and my name and the name of my fathers will be called upon them. This is the blessing that uh, by Jewish tradition every father gives to his children Friday night just after the Kiddush, before the Shabbat meal. And the story goes on, and here it is. It says in verse 20, And he says, The nation of Israel is going to bless with your name. And part of that blessing, that the fathers are blessing their children, and God will put you like Ephraim and Menashe. Uh, so he continues with the blessings, and then, uh, chapter 49, Jacob is calling his son and again he's giving them blessings. And these blessings go all the way till the end of the parasha. It's not a long parasha, 72 verses. Okay, uh, just a second. Which means those are like eternal blessings that everyone can use in many, many synagogues 
on the uh, uh, in the art of building synagogues. You have the blessing, those blessings of Jacob to his sons. You can find them in so many other places. It's a symbol of bliss, protection, and so on. And then there's a story of the funeral of Jacob. Uh, before that, the brothers were standing together in unity. What a blessing for a father to see his children loving each other, united. Uh, finally, after so many years of, a, of a, so, many, so much hardship. Okay, I'm sorry, it's not 72 verses, it's, four, it's 85 verses. And 85 is peh, a mouth. A mouth, Sfirat Malchut, the manifestation of the whole book of Genesis. Okay, so the book, this, this parasha is full of blessings and bliss, and it looks like it's a great thing. So, but when we read the Zohar, we realize, uh, yes, it is full of blessings, but there's a deeper meaning. And let, let us start with the beginning of the Zohar of this parasha. The Zohar of this parasha, the Zohar of Parashat Vayichi, verse 1 in the Sulam commentary, and translation, Jacob lived in the land of Egypt for 17 years. Rabbi Yossi said, His heart saw prophecy in Egypt. And he saw, what does it mean? From, we said, the, the uh, simple uh, translation is, that finally Jacob had a great, beautiful life in Egypt. Just in Egypt, 17 years of good life. Finally, they have the pleasure to see your children multiply and they are ru ru ruling the nation of Egypt. And like, you know, what, what a uh, pleasurable experience. And here the Zohar says what Jacob saw, he saw the prophecy and we'll see, it's hinted in the word Vayichi, and he lived. And he saw the exiles that his children are going to go through. How many, how many exiles? So there was the Egyptian exile, the Babylonian exile, the Roman exile. And now this exile finally it looks like in the last century that this exile is coming to conclusion. Okay. And he saw all the exile, which means all the miseries and the suffering till the, till the coming, the time of the coming of the Messiah. And then the Zohar continues. And then the Zohar says something very, very powerful and very, very important. Jacob reached that level of prophecy that is called Vayichi. It's similar to the level of prophecy of Moses because also with Moses there is this verse uh, that is taken from, um, no, it doesn't say over here, but it's a, that's in the book of Exodus, that it mentioned the word chai, again with seeing God. And the Zohar explains, when we, talking, when we are talking about that word vayichi, chai and so on, it is a symbol, a hint, for a special level of spirituality. And this level is the level of Sfirat Chochmah. When we are talking about spiritual level of a person's uh, growth, everyone starts with a basic level which is called Nefesh. Nefesh is the level that you need to have in order, in order to be able to sustain the body. Without the nefesh, the body is dead. When a person is really dedicated for spiritual work and growth, 
he can finally ascend to another level and receive another level, a soul level that is called Ruach, spirit. But Ruach means something more active. Nefesh means something more passive, which means animals also have Nefesh. What does it mean? I live, I exist, I have, you know, I'm doing what I have to do in order to be a normal person, raising a family, making a living and stuff like this. That, you know, cats do that, cows do that, you know, animals who don't do that, they don't survive. Uh, they don't eat like there's a natural selection. But you need the desire to fight for your own needs. That's called nefesh. Ruach is when you, when you make the effort to connect to higher levels of spirituality, you're, when you connect to vision, to, uh, to ideals, uh, to uh, values that are beyond the physical necessity. Okay, when you really become spiritual, that's Ruach, which means when you walk up and above and you can create miracles. So that's Ruach, the second level. The third level above Ruach, when you really excel in that level, you receive another level that is called Neshama. Neshama. Above Neshama, there's another level which is called Chaya, living, living soul. And that level, it corresponds also to the level that is called Chokhmah. Chokhmah is wisdom, which means the wisdom in the level of real prophecy. Only two people reach that place, says the Zohar, Moses and Jacob. Both achieve that level of Chaya. No one ever reached that place, only Moses and Jacob. Okay, all the prophets, even Moses arrived, uh, I'm sorry, all the prophets, even the highest of them, they reached levels in the level of Ruach. Some sages achieved Neshama, but reaching Chaya, only two, Moses and Jacob. And when you reach that level, the Zohar says, that means that you can see the future like watching TV in today's language, which means you can look at a shining mirror and you can see the reflection and all the wisdom. Everything shines at your face. Today, is, it's like TV or watching something in, on your computer, which means the picture is shining at you. The prophets, they prophesied through symbols and they had to, to basically uh, e extrapolate from the symbols they saw to what was the message. Uh, God speaking to Ezekiel, what do you see? I see, I see a big pot. Okay, that means so and so. I see, uh, I see, um, um, <clears throat> I see a tree. All, all of those are symbols, and they explain the symbols. The only ones who could see the future the way, you know, completely a vision without hints just to see the way it is that's when you reach Chaya Moses and and Jacob however what does it say you cannot reach that level unless you go through what is called Achorayim behind what does it mean behind that you really feel that God turned his back to you and you don't let that control your life. You really feel that you are in exile, you're just alone, nobody's with you, and you know that you see it, you know that you feel it, and you overcome that horrible, horrible experience that God turned his back to you. And you continue to talk to God, to pray to God, to trust God, and to bring the revelation when you overcome such a terrible experience you can really achieve true revelation true revelation now that is right for every person in every level however 
both Jacob and Moses achieved that level through the darkness of Egypt, which there's no darkness more dark than Egypt. And therefore, they achieved that. The Israelites achieved that once on the night of the Exodus. Everybody of the Israelites achieved that. That was the only way that could, they could get out of Egypt. However, because they didn't do anything for that, so that was gone, that revelation was gone the next day. They had to work for it and achieve that again on Mount Sinai. But they couldn't hold it more than 40 days. So when we are talking about this story, we're talking about a, a theme that we're going to see through the whole parasha of Vayichi, the completing parasha of the book of Bereshit. And what does it say? That Moses and Jacob had to go to the darkest place. Look, what was the youth of Moses? You know, when his mother was pregnant, everybody in the household knew there's a death sentence to every Jewish baby. Okay? So just imagine the, the, the terrible, and we know that babies are affected from what's going around during the pregnancy. So living in such a horror, they, 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 the Torah is speaking about Moses that he, because his father and his mother did not want to bring a baby to be killed, so they separated. And the, the Midrash, the legend, is saying that only Miriam, she brought them back together. She said, what does it mean? Pharaoh said he's going to kill all, only the boys. And now, right now, you sentence also the, the girls to death because you don't want to bring any child. And she convinced them to try to conceive again. And they brought to the world Moses. So you live, you're being conceived under terror. The pregnancy is under terror. He's prematurely born. His mother is keeping him under the terror of, of Pharaoh's messengers coming to take the baby and drown him. And finally, she puts him on the Nile and he grows up with strangers. Like, you know, like it was, it's horrible. And Moses with all of that. And then when he's 40 years old and he realizes he's Israelite and the whole story of killing the Egyptian that is torturing the Jew and he runs away for his life and he has to wander in the desert. All of that story, you cannot become Moses without going, that's what the Zoe is saying, without going through such terrible days and moments. But it makes you grow. People with simple, nice, easy life cannot become a Moses. They cannot become a Jacob. And we learned about the Jacob, what kind of a life also. His brother wants to kill him, then his uh, uncle cheats him, then he wants to kill him too. Then he has to overcome the, uh, his brother's uh, vicious desire for murder. And he cannot become a Jacob and more than that, you cannot reach that level of clairvoyance and prophecy, every person in his own place, without the commitment to see the darkness and to turn it into light. That's what the Zohar is saying. This is the, this is the main story. So we'll see how the theme goes through that uh, story because the Zohar opens, that, opens it up for us. Okay. Okay. Um, So here we will see that theme along the whole parasha, the whole parasha of Bereshit, of Evaichi, which is the mouth of Bereshit. What does it mean, the mouth? When in Kabbalistic uh, symbolism, mouth is malchut, the completion. You think about it, you listen, you make, uh, you bring up the whole thing inside your mind, but when it comes out of your mouth, it means manifestation. This parasha is manifestation of the whole book of Genesis. And what was the book of Genesis about? The book of Genesis was, a, Genesis was about the creation, the purpose of creation, and how Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and later on Joseph, 
reveal the purpose of the creation step by step by learning how a person is basically brought to this world for a very, very simple purpose, to become a creator, to become, to emulate his creator, which means to learn how to create, to learn how to overcome negativity and to succeed in any state, no matter what the challenges are. And it's only challenges. There are no disasters, no bad omens, bad luck. It's only opportunities for growth. They always create light out of darkness. That's a whole story. So here we'll see another theme, like verse 45 in the in the Zohar Parashat Vayichi. Vayugad Yaakov Yosef Ba'elecha. It's Jacob is being told that Joseph is coming to visit him. Rabbi Yossi Amar Malachaya. It was an angel that told Jacob that Joseph is coming to visit him. Shuatit lo martov al Yisrael be, and this angel is going to bring good to the nation of Israel. Be'et sheyashuv el Hakadosh Baruch Hu bechol tzarata. When they are going to reconnect to God, when they are in their trouble. Their trouble, not somebody else's trouble. It's their trouble. Which means what the Zohar is saying, when we go through troubles, we should own the trouble. It's ours. It didn't fall in our share just by mere coincidence. There's no lottery up in heaven. The trouble we go through, we have to go through it. Why? When they end them of the Messiah, of the Messiah, the Messianic days, and a lot about the Messianic days in this parasha, when the coming of the Messiah will be nearing, and the Israelites are going to be redeemed from all the troubles they experienced, the Yomar el and then they are going to connect to that to that midah, to that attribute that is Jacob, that is the central column, that is Sefirat Ifet, Banecha Baim Elecha V'yigalu Tovei Ma'inu Yisrael. Your children are coming to you. What has been coming to you? How can you be redeemed? Redemption is not sitting there and waiting for the Messiah to come and solve the issue for you. Because that is not solving the problem that we have in Genesis chapter 1, verse 5. And there was a night, there was a day, one day. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And because God is endless and is perfect, he created the perfect reality. However, he couldn't help it because he's endless God. But giving us everything, including himself. And therefore, we needed, wanted also to be a creator. And we learned it so many times. Uh, however, you cannot be a creator, you cannot be creative, you cannot be independent, and you cannot, you cannot be a sharing being when everything is perfect for you, when you are created in something that is so perfect that it's one. The universe that the whole, that of the beginning, that in the beginning, that universe was in total perfection. When we are in total perfection, we cannot achieve the real satisfaction of being a creator. Okay? So, the creation has to be broken down. We had to fall into this exile that is called living in a physical body so we can attain the image of the creator by overcoming the troubles. And that's inevitable. You cannot skip that. You cannot. So if Everybody say, saying, I'm sitting here, I'm just following, following some rules, and sooner or later, the Messiah is going to come, and he's going to redeem only his followers. The rest of humanity is going to rot in hell forever, and only us, the loyal um, followers, will be happy forever. Both concepts are such a myth, such a lie. A, what we learn. Do you think that God, that is endless love, 
will create somebody to fail? Impossible. This is like the worst. It's like really not understanding what does it mean monotheism. Every human soul was created to be happy and fulfilled, and it will be happy and fulfilled because it was created for that purpose. However, it has that soul must go through darkness in order to earn and own that fulfillment, that independence, that creativity, that feeling of a creator that shares, creates, and does it independently. And that's, there's no way to get away from that. You can run away, you have to come back. You can run away, but you have, finally, you have to do it. And it doesn't matter whoever saw uh, the movie Groundhog Day. And we see this guy is trying again and again to run away from his destiny and he commits suicide 10,000 times and finally he realizes the only day to get out of this cycle that is not vicious, it's to face your destiny and to start being a creator. Be happy independently, create and share with others and stop making all kinds of complaints about you know, I don't like it here, I'm not supposed to be here, all of that nonsense. And only then you reach beyond your expectations, because that is the formula. So do you think that somebody who calls himself Messiah can come and give that to us? No, no one can get that. You have to create it on your own. And you have to go through it to the pain and the hardship and the misery and the darkness. And without it, he can't become you. He cannot reach that sephirah of redemption. So what is the Messiah? The Messiah is there is basically that revelation that humanity arrives to when we get it. What we are here for and we really are ready to commit for it. But in order to reach that place, we need to go through so much darkness till we learn how not to let that darkness to reach us and to take over our lives. Uh, and that basically is reaching central column, the balance between the receiving and giving and doing it with happiness and joy without saying, hey, do you know how much did it cost me? How tough was it for me? Without the complaint, just appreciation and excitement about life. And if you don't do it right now, you have to do it next life. If not next life, the next life till you're going to do it right. And the end is well, when everything is well. When the end is well, everything is well. And if it's not well, it's not the end. You'll have to get and deal with it all over again. These are the rules. So we'll see over here how that theme is all over the parasha, and this is for us. And that's a big, the biggest blessing. And I'll show it. Here, you have verse 25 in the Zohar of Vayichi. And his days came to die. Rabbi Shetkiah said, He saw the trouble of exile that will happen to his sons. Okay? And he, and he, and he had to go down in his spiritual levels to understand that because of the sins of Israel. And then he explains that, he came, that Jacob, which means that power of Israel, that power of spirituality, goes with us to our exile so we can finally uh, give up on exile and misery and finally we are ready to redeem ourselves. And that is very, very important. So we ask the question, so why is it that when Joseph, when Jacob is giving his sons and his grandsons and the whole Israel nation, 
all of this blessing, why he doesn't bless them if he's so powerful that they won't go into exile, that they won't have suffering, that they won't have misery, that they won't have pain. That's not a blessing, that's a curse. Why? Because he cannot take from someone his birthright, which is to be a creator of his own. If you're trying to run after everybody and just give them whatever they want, and you just give them all the precious love, love and gifts in the world, you cannot take away their calling, which is going down, and that's called exile, falling, death. You cannot take it away from them because it's taking from them the greatest gift, which is being in the darkness, giving up the darkness, getting to the light, and finally have the real ownership over the victory of light over darkness. The whole purpose of this physical life is just about this. So the whole theme along this parasha, the whole theme is about blessings that Jacob is giving to his sons and his sons, it's all of us basically, because those blessings are not supposed to take, to take from us any troubles. Like many people think, no, the blessings are, so when the troubles hit us, we learn how to turn the troubles into gains. This is a story. <coughs> and it's not by coincidence that the level of Chaya, the level that Moshe, Moses and Jacob arrived, is Chokhmah. And the number for Sfirat Chokhmah, the symbol number, is 72. That's the number of Chokhmah. And 72 is also Ein Bet. It's also the two letters of the month of Capricorn. And the month of Capricorn is never easy. Why? Because the planet Saturn is a big teacher. Chokhav Shabtai. And the teaching is that how come you learn only through hardship? Only. The only learning happens when you face horror, pain, loss, darkness, and you overcome it. That's the only way a person achieves a godly identity. If you're waiting there for the Messiah to come, and you're waiting there for somebody to redeem you, you'll be waiting forever. It will never happen. You're just wasting your time. The only way is to pick up yourself and start moving like Joseph. As we learn about him in the last parasha and the parasha before. Yes, he had a trauma. His brothers sold him. They wanted to kill him first. They threw him into a pit of scorpions and snakes. He just grew up from that. <clears throat> How do we know? The, the moment he becomes a slave in Egypt, the worst, he's starting to create magic. He's using all the family secrets to make his master rich. Why? That's where God put me. I'll do my best. And he creates such a wealth for his master that he becomes a CEO of Potiphar's uh, assets, which is one of the biggest, richest people in, in Egypt. So, we know that Joseph achieved all that greatness just because he took his father's blessing. That's his father raised him till the age of 17. Remember, 17 is good. 17 is good. He was kidnapped at 17. He was almost murdered by his brothers at 17. He became a slave at 17. So 17 is good? Yes, because without that, he tells his brothers, and again in this Persia, you had a bad intention, but God had a good one. And you know what? It's always God's intention that comes through. The only intention that, our intention that will come through is when we are ready to pick up our responsibility and create our own light instead of blame and shame and victim and all of that stuff. There's no other way. Because the suffering and the misery will continue. And Kohav Shabtai and the planet Saturn is the big teacher. He makes you go through the pain more and more and more till you reach the real true wisdom. What is the wisdom? 
Nobody else will do it to you. And nobody else can take anything from you. Whoever you think took something away from you, that was just God's message. He's just a messenger. Oh, yes, our sages are saying, Malgalgalim, Schutel, Azakai, Vechoval, Dechayav. You know, why did God send you as a messenger to hurt somebody else? You don't want to be a messenger for that. The brothers, because they chose to be the messengers to sell Joseph as a slave, they had to pay for it and they had to overcome that. And it took them a few lifetimes in order to, to pay that all the way through. But that brought them to greatness. So all of those stories on, that we have all the blessings, it's what it says that wherever you have the pain, the plagues, the problem, God prepared already in advance the remedy. So wherever you go through darkness and pain, the remedy is just there. You don't have to go all around the globe to find it. It's within you. You just have to let it in and you just have to let in that idea that it's that no other solution except from taking responsibility for the darkness and say that's my darkness because it's my game to turn the darkness into light and nobody else's and i'm not supposed to expect to anybody to solve the problem for me so the biggest gift that we have looking at this way is all the troubles that we go through because without those troubles we won't be who we are and if we don't bless over those troubles and aches and pains we will never become the great people we're supposed to become we'll never reach godliness because what does it mean godliness godliness means that you realize that god is one and there's nothing but god so God is in the troubles. He is part of the trouble. He is the solution. But he's also part of the trouble because the trouble is not a trouble. It is an opportunity, as people say today. People really understand what does it mean to be successful. And <clears throat> so one of the... Uh, most amazing articles that I want to share with you in this parasha, in verse 81 in, uh, in uh, the Zohar, it's related to uh, the parasha itself. That's in chapter uh, 48, verse 7. And it says over there, And I, when I came from Padan, says Jacob, to Joseph, Meta Rachel, Rachel died because of me. Be'eretz Knan, in the land of Canaan. Baderech Baot Kivat Eretz Lavoy Frata, just a little bit before the Ephrat, which means between Bethlehem, what is Bethlehem? Vaikbira Sham Bedech Ephrati Bethlehem. And I buried her over there in the road to Ephrat, which is Bethlehem. Okay, and the Zohar is asking about this verse. He's asking, why does Jacob? have to tell that to Joseph because he was there when it happened. What, what, what is he telling over here? And the Zohar says that is a prophecy. And the prophecy goes as this way. Uh, verse 81 in the Zohar of Parashat Vayichri. Rabbi Abba Pata, Rabbi Abba opened. Ko amar Adonai kol barama nishma. This is from uh, Jeremiah 31. And this is one of the most famous verses in the whole Bible. A voice has been heard. And what is this verse? Rachel Bocha, that Rachel is lamenting her sons went to exile. And then it continues. What does it say after that? So said God, 
<coughs> do not cry. There is, there is a reward for whatever you did in your life. He doesn't say, and your children will return to their place. It says, and they returned in past tense, not in future tense. Hello, This is a promise for future days to come. Should have been said, Veyashuvu Banim. Veyashuvu, they will return. Veshavu means they returned. Umeshiv Bore. And the answer is, come and see. And that's a prophecy the Zohar says inside that verse. Beshash Yadin Alahar. Vashkinat itater alar dainu shetikabel shamuchin amuchunim atara. Veyhoshevet al shabana yovdu badin veinochen. There will be a time that the children of Rachel, which means the nation of Israel and the rest of the world, will go through so much trouble. It looks like the judgment is so heavy. You know, when the judgment is very heavy, you do not see the future, you do not see a solution. You are, usually, our nature is to focus on the pain and the trouble, and it consumes us till there's nothing left, and our whole being becomes sore just from the sense of disaster. And the Shekhinah even thinks that their children will be lost by with the judgment. And it's not like this. Ve'enochen. Ve'asodu, the secret is, Roni akara lo yalada, pitzchi rina v'tzahali. Lamadnu rabim yubnei akisem in bane ha'atzma. Because that is so, as we follow in the same rules, when the darkness is so dark, when the hopelessness is so, so um, final, overcoming that creates the biggest light. And all the deep place that we go through, in the darkest troubles we fall, we fall into, it's only for one purpose. So we can reveal our true calling a true godliness, okay, and rebuild our own uh, connection to the Creator. And therefore it says, Veshavu banim Gvulam, and they return in past tense because God is saying, you know, it's a done deal. And that's what we have to hold on in the darkest moments in our lives. And, you know, if you bless somebody, I wish you never feel sorrow and pain in your life. It's like you're cursing him. Which means you want to tell me that I'm not supposed, I'm not have, I don't have any more to achieve in this world. When do we achieve something? Only when we turn the hopelessness into triumph of victory. Only then. So not going through pain and challenges and so on, this is a curse. This is a curse. The blessing is that we'll be able to overcome, not that we are not going to go through something like this. So the Zohar says again, and did, did Joseph know that his mother died? He was there with her when she died. He knows exactly. There's no day in his life he didn't remember that day that his mother died giving birth to Benjamin, his brother. But he says, no, this is a prophecy. When Israel speaks, it is the, the above Israel. This is the high sefira, the highest sefirot that are called Israel. And he says, when we will come back for redemption, the Shekhinah will wake up and they're going, there's going to be a war with the other nations. ויאמותו מהם ישראל במלחמה זו ויתקרבו לאט לאט לבוא אל הארץ. The children of Israel are not going to go back to their own land of Israel safely, simply, easily, painlessly. It's going to be slowly, slowly, and many are going to die on that journey to reveal the redemption. In the land of Israel. 
And then God will tell her when she cries for her dead sons that died in the wars of Israel's redemption. Al tifchadi, don't be afraid. Sachar yesh lehem labanim shemetu b'milchama ashmi. Those sons that died in the war, in my name, for my sake, they will come back in the resurrection of the dead. So meta alai Rachel, what do I mean meta alai? Meta alai, it's not an expression in Hebrew that somebody dies for sacrificing, offering himself for, for somebody else. When we come on a journey for Messiah and giving ourselves, offering ourselves for the sake of God, that's how we're going to achieve redemption. Redemption is not going to come when we are going to be sitting there and waiting it to come. It's not going to be. The same way nobody makes a living just sitting there waiting for the money to come. You have to create something. You have to make uh, the, the actions, you have to make the effort, and it will come. Most times, not from the di direction you imagine in the beginning. You know, very few people have a vision. What they're going to be when they're really young, what they're going to be when they come older, and what's going to be the profession. And they, most people do not really achieve what they vision, because you know what you ask for somebody... 15 years old, 20 years old, even 25 years old, to know about what they really want. You discover it by the way, as you follow the journey and you make the effort and then you realize, ah, that was not my real wish. That wish, uh, I think I borrowed it from somebody else. That was uh, borrowed from my environment, from my friends, for movies and so, but really what I really want, I just realized. I didn't think about it before. I didn't realize that. So we know when we come for our own personal redemption and a redemption as a society, it's going to be through hardship and ongoing, slow journey of fights, revolutions, reinvention, innovation again and again and again when humanity gets this idea. And especially in Israel, this is called the Messianic Age. And so, the Zohar continues. So on the way to Bethlehem, there are going to be a war and many are going to die, giving their lives to come back and retake their promised land. But then they will come and resurrect for the resurrection of the dead. And those people who sacrificed themselves in the wars of Israel for the sake of redemption, and they realize it's not going to be for free. There's no, there are no free gifts. Those are going to have the highest place because they achieved the redemption by their own merit. So why it's called Beit Lechem? Because lechem is the same source of the word lacham, milchama, to war, to fight. Death is the place, and that's why Rachel is on the road, not to prevent us from the journey, but to bless us in the journey, so to make sure that we are going to make a triumph and reach the goal of that journey, which is turning the darkness into light. And that is the message of this parasha in the month of Capricorn, the month of hard work, reaching the highest levels. Just when? When you let go of the nonsense that somebody owes you, that God owes you. It, it doesn't matter. You have to get it on your own, through your own labor. And that's the highest level of wisdom, Chochmah. And wisdom is even greater than prophecy. Thank you so much. Have a great week.